1. Met a certified Karen. We have all met our share of Karens, but sometimes they're so obnoxious that you wonder how they've managed to get this far in life being so entitled. I wish I had recorded this, but I was so incredulous and didn't know what to do. I was at Costco, picking up a prescription at the pharmacy. They have a yellow line that you're supposed to stand behind while you wait, so as to give the patient privacy as they're speaking to the pharmacist. The line kind of directs you behind the pharmacy, so it's obvious when there are people waiting. No big deal, right? Not for a Karen. The cast. EM, entitled Mom, whose actual name is Karen. I shit you not. S1, Spawn 1, about 4. S2, Spawn 2, about 8. PA, Farm Assistant. AM, Angry Man. SP, Stoner Bro. DH, Department Head of Security. Things seemed to be a bit hectic at the Costco Pharmacy. There was only one assistant doing the pickups, and I could sense that things were busy behind the scenes. An older couple in front of me were concerned about the medication and said they couldn't read, so they had the assistant read the drug pamphlet to them. They were there for about ten minutes, and it was a bit frustrating, but what can you do but wait? So I was next in line, standing way back behind the yellow line. There were a handful of people behind me. While I was waiting, I could hear a kid throwing a tantrum somewhere in the pharmacy department. The older couple was finishing up with the PA, and then suddenly this woman appeared behind the adjacent aisles, huffing and puffing. Her spawn one was literally gripping to her legs as she walked. She showed up in such a flurry of anger, you could feel the energy shift. So I was careful not to make eye contact. She started tapping her foot, and I was starting to wonder what she was doing there. Then the older couple started pushing their cart away. I started to walk toward the counter. Our Karen then says, wagging a finger towards me, Ah, ah, ah! It's my turn! Meanwhile, the older couple turn back to the pharmacist. They have one more question. There's actually a whole line here. It's my turn next. The line is back there. Heh. <laughs> well, then why aren't you standing here if you're in line? She says with actual air quotes. As the sign says here, they want us to stand back there to give the patient privacy. We have all been waiting for quite some time. Then the older couple actually finishes up. I start to try to walk in front of the EM. She steps in, holds her hands up toward me and says something to the PA. Angry man now chimes in. This is ridiculous. Get to the back of the line and wait like the rest of us. We all saw you get here after us. Wait in line. Ma'am, they are correct, says the pharmacy assistant. They've been waiting in line, and I'm going to have to ask you to go to the back of the line and wait. Oh, they're going to be fine with me going first. She summons her other spawn. S2 appears from the aisles looking content. Honey! Then S2 out of nowhere... And starts stomping, sobbing, and screaming as loud as possible. EM looks back at us. I'm sure you want me to go first so I can get this child away from you. Did you teach her to do that? Am I actually witnessing this? Did you just signal your child to start screaming? Get to the back of the line! Nope. My kid needs to go to bed. I'll be quick, and then I'll leave with my kids and you can talk to the pharmacist in peace. You'll understand when you have children one day. Ma'am, I'm going to have to ask you to cooperate or I will call security. Security. Security! My child is tired and hungry. You're going to call security on my poor child. This is ridiculous. Let me talk to your manager. I can't believe we are being treated like this. My children are tired. Oh shit. We got ourselves a Karen, everyone. She spins on her heels and stomps closer. What did you say? How did you know my name? Tell me now, young man. How did you know my name? Wait, your actual name is Karen? Can't write this shit, man. I start laughing. The angry man behind me starts snickering. Stoner Bro is laughing. This has become a comedy sketch. Ma'am, I'm calling security. We have several patients to get through, and you're being disruptive. I see her pop into the other side and say something to whom I assume to be a pharmacist. 
My children need to get home. Just let me get my prescription and leave. Do you know how much money I spend here? Do you know how long I've been a member? Pulls a card from her pocket. Look at that! Look! Right here! Member since 2012. 2012! Can you read that? For seven years, I have spent exorbitant amounts of money here. You do not want me to take my business elsewhere. Uh, what's the issue here, folks? This woman here... Great, you're here. I need to make a complaint. I've been waiting patiently, and then all these people are trying to get me to go to the back of the line. My children are impatient and hungry. I need to get going, and this woman here is being difficult, and I'd like to report her to management to be reprimanded. I just want to get my prescription, and I will leave. She cut in front of everyone. Ma'am, I just dealt with you over there when you dropped off your prescription. We told you it would be an hour. It wasn't you, it was someone else. That, and she then used racial slurs because she's a real classy lady. And I don't care. Go back and fill my prescription. My kids are screaming and tired. By this point, the kids were doing literally nothing. But then heard her say this and started screaming like lusterly. I have security on their way. The head turns to me. How about PA helps you here? Excuse me. I am first. I demand you get my prescription. I am a paying customer. So are all these people. Your prescription won't even be finished for another hour. And you are going to be escorted out of here for disrupting the store. Security shows up. Ma'am, I need you to come with me. You're being rude and disrespectful. Let's go sort this out privately. Absolutely not. You cannot make me do anything. I know my rights. I am leaving to get a refund for my membership. You people will never see a dime from me again. And storms off as security follows her. Bye, Karen! Then I proceed to finally go to the counter and get my prescription. Apologizing to the PA on behalf of Karen, the PA tells me quietly that she's dealt with her before, but she's never been that bad, and yes, the kids cry on demand. I hear AM behind me saying that he sincerely hopes they call child services, because those poor kids are being taught to be brats. Stonerbro just laughs and says, I can't believe we all actually met a Karen in the wild. What a trip. 2. My class is just let out from NMSU, and I decided to get some Chinese food for my grandparents and I before heading home. Ordering and receiving my food was easy enough, and I was driving out of the parking lot. I see a red car put its reverse lights on as I'm driving by. They literally just came on, and if I stopped, I would have blocked her in, so I kept going. The woman let foots the gas and rams right into my driver's side. She hit my car so hard it almost flipped over. My car was almost completely sideways before it dropped back down. I had to kick open my door in order to get out and look at the rest of the damage. As I'm looking at this lady's car waiting for her to get out, I realize she has a child in the passenger seat, who she actually made get out first. This kid comes up to me and says, Accidents happen! As her mother is slowly getting out of the car and stands behind her. Now I'm pissed. This bitch is trying to use her child as a shield. And I was not going to have it. Why don't you have your kid wait in the car while I call the police? She looks absolutely terrified. Her daughter looks embarrassed. But at least the lady agreed and let her kid listen to music. The cops would not come out because the restaurant is private property and unless the owner called... I had to handle this myself. The damn dispatch lady even said the street I was on did not exist. The stupidity in that town still amazes me to this day. So I grab my insurance and ask for the ladies. She turns red and admits she has insurance, but her sister was renewing it today and would have to have her bring it to her. I told her to call her sister and get the insurance because I wouldn't be going anywhere until I have all her information. It took 45 minutes in a town where it only takes 20 to get across the whole town. I am beyond angry. I am putting my best foot forward to be kind and just get this over with. When her sister finally gets to the restaurant, she bolts out of her car and immediately starts screaming at me. She was an engineering student, and judging by the damage, her sister couldn't have done this damage to my car. This is our heavily pregnant entitled bitch. Like watermelon under her shirt pregnant. Our argument went along these lines. My sister didn't do this, you're just trying to get a new car. I can ask the restaurant for their camera footage if you'd like. I did not just spend an hour in the sun for nothing. 
Give me your insurance so I can get out of here already. I don't bother arguing over the fact that I wasn't lying. I did not want to feed her more. The bitch glared at me and got within inches of my face. I'm not giving a lying piece of shit like you anything. How can you prove my sister hit you? You're just looking to upgrade from this piece of shit. This is where she starts that damn finger jabbing in the air by my face thing. I hate that. And in my experience, those actions always lead to a fight. So I got an idea to squash this before it got physical. Look, lady, if you want a fight, you have to realize your stomach will be fair game. Her jaw drops, and she just blinks at me as I smirk at her. Her sister is just watching all this go down and won't intervene. And now, finally, I'm assuming her man gets out of the car and comes over. He hands me the insurance so I can copy it down while he makes his bitch move towards the car. The whole time I'm copying down the information, I can see and hear her still screaming about how her sister is not responsible for crashing into me, and he tries to push her into the car. I handed the paper back to the actual lady that hit my car, and suggested that her sister learn some control before someone teaches her a lesson, and to be grateful, I did not call the police on her for her threatening behaviour. Jokes on them. Their insurance totaled out my car and gave me three times what my car is worth. And my new one was a black Chevy Malibu with all the bells and whistles. Thanks, bitch. P.S. for all those triggered by my threat to a pregnant woman. She was threatening me, and I had to shut her down before it became physical. If she actually did try to hit me, I would not have gone for her stomach, but she didn't need to know that. 3. Backstory I am a huge Transformers nerd. But because my country is kind of oblivious to the things happening to the outside world, getting new and cool Transformers stuff is hard. Also, the websites that have the coolest stuff don't usually ship here. I do go to the UK once every summer, but that's only for a week. To fix my lack of nerd merch problem, I order something from a website, set the shipping address to one of my friends in the UK, and they send the package here. Then afterwards, I PayPal him the money he spent on the shipping. A bit complicated, but it works. The real story begins. I was at the post office once again to get my package of stuff. I had ordered four items. Transformers Masterpiece Optimus Prime 3.0, 500 euro. And three of Star Trek ship models, 50 euro. The post office was quite busy today. Whole seven people were in there. There's normally zero to three people. Two of those seven people caught my eye or ear, to be more exact. A couple in their late twenties, who were a bit further away and were ranting. How the line was moving too slowly and that the workers are too slow. Just like I do with a lot of things, I ignore them and just wait there. After some waiting, my turn arrives. I get my package. The cashier was surprised how heavy the smaller type package was and asked me what was in there. I explained to her that it was my casual nerd things, aka Transformers and spaceships and left. The real story gets really real. I got out of the post office and rushed to my car. I got in the box into the boot and got myself into the car when I heard knocking on the roof of my car. I let down the window, peek out, and it's the whining couple. The real story that was quite real got even realer. Hello, is there a problem? Hi. We just wanted to ask you about the box you got in the post office. Oh, my Transformers. Yes, those things. Well, if you're asking about the fact that I'm an adult playing with something a lot of people consider as children's toys, then I can't give you a solid answer. No, we would like to buy the entire box. You're kidding, right? I just got them. I've never even opened the box, and also one of the Transformers toys that's in there costs around 500 euro. What? 500 euro? And there's also three Starship models that cost 50 euro each. 30 euros. I said they're not for sale. But we need something for our son. He turned five a couple of weeks ago, and we forgot to get something for him. Yes, he actually said that he forgot his son's birthday. As I said, these things are expensive and way too fragile to let a five-year-old play with it. Also, the transformation for Optimus is complicated, even for people with good memory. So imagine a five-year-old with it. Come on, you selfish bastard. Give us those toys. Yeah, no. I roll up the window, start the car, and drive off. Some minutes later, I take notice the car is following me. Honestly, it was hard not to notice, considering that the car was bright yellow. I was going to go to the grocery store anyway, so I parked my car at the store's parking lot. 
When I come back 15 minutes later, I find a noticeable group of people has gathered around my car. I unlock the doors only to see them trying to open the boot. Fortunately, I opened the doors but left the trunk closed. But the people were so determined to open it that the whole car shook when they janked it. Hey, what in the world is going on here? There, there's the man who took my kid's toys. Somehow, don't ask why, while I was at the store, a couple got a group of people, including the store's workers, to believe some kind of a lie. What the hell are you on about? I literally got these toys from... Our car's trunk. People were looking like they were ready to punch my teeth out, so I lost my temper. From the post office, I ordered these toys from the United Kingdom, and then my friend sent these over here. For God's sakes, people, if you want to see proof, step away from the car and let me open the boot where there's a package with my bloody name on it. I felt how my face was red hot from the unleashed anger. People stepped a couple of steps back and I opened the trunk. Straight when the trunk was open, the EM yoinked it away. Went a bit further away and tried to rip off the delivery label. This is quite hard, of course. I managed to yoink back the package, go to my car, grab the driving license with my name and picture on it, and show it to everyone. As soon as they saw that the package was to my name, they turned towards the EPs. Just then, with some amazing timing, came a cop car. One of the bystanders had called them when I engaged rage mode. Everyone tells the cops that the EPs tried to steal my package and showed them the evidence. One kid who saw everything from the side even recorded the part where I went berserk. The cops asked if I wanted to press charges. Of course, I couldn't decline. Some people later came to me and apologized for janking the trunk of my car, etc. Some time passed and I was finally given permission to go home. 4. Cast me, me, 25-year-old woman, EM, entitled mother, LS, little shithead, around 7 years old, I'm guessing, NR, nice receptionist, OG, older gentleman, hero. So I've fallen sick and thus had to book an emergency appointment with the doctor so I can get it checked out and also get the needed paperwork for my work. Rules state I have to get a doctor's papers the same day I get sick, or it's invalid. Sitting here, I use my phone to distract myself from my uncomfortable feeling in my stomach and bowels. Reading Reddit, mostly. Entering EM and LS. I have an appointment with the doctor for my little angel. The receptionist checks the register with the aid of their names and EM's ID card. You are here two hours early, ma'am. Would you like to come back in two hours or wait in the waiting room? I will go sit with my little angel. Just talk to the doctor and he will see us immediately. Note that it is very busy. A lot of people are here and my own appointment is already being delayed with 20 minutes by then. EM and LS sit down on the few leftover chairs across from me. And I just keep reading some insane stories about entitled and insane parents. When suddenly, LS is standing right in front of me. Do you have games on your phone? Just a few, but I'm reading right now. Can I play games on your phone? Rather not, as I said. I'm reading, which is to distract myself from my sick feeling. Ellis goes to his mother and cries about not being allowed to play games on my phone. Give my little angel your phone. You've clearly had it a long time already. So you can miss it for a few minutes. Ma'am, I'm not giving your son my phone. Yes, it's old. I already had a few cracks on the screen and lost the back cover. It's a OnePlus 2, by the way. But I'm fond of it, and would rather not have your son break it more than it already is, besides. Why won't you just let him use your phone? You clearly have no idea what it's like to have children. He will break my phone if I let him. But if he breaks yours, it won't matter, because you're obviously capable of buying a new one yourself. I have no idea why she thinks that. I'm not dressed fancy or wearing expensive jewelry. Also, if I'd be able to buy a new one so easily, I would not be using this one still after seven years. And many falls. I'm not giving your son my phone. A moment of silence happens when suddenly I hear footsteps. See a glimpse of long fake nails and my phone is snatched from my hands. I look up to see EM holding my phone triumphantly while smirking down at me. And LS standing next to her with a big smile. This is when OG gets up, grabs her wrist and very calmly talks to her. Mum? Please give this young lady her phone back. I might be retired from the police force, but I still know how to restrain a thief and can call someone to arrest you in seconds. 
How dare you assault me in front of my child, you old lying fart? Get your hands off me or I will call the real cops on you. After this, everything went a tad too fast for me to follow. Partially because I got another wave of nausea. But it ended with my phone on the ground, EM yelling at NR about letting sickos and criminals do as they please, and LS crying at her leg while OG asks me if I'm okay. It took me a little while to realize that I had quite a scratch on my face from EM's horrible nails. She probably took my nauseated bending forward as a violent threat. The scratches weren't bad, but I did bleed a little. EM got so uptight against NR which made NR call the police which are one street away. The police arrived, EM yelled lies at them, but the officer recognized OG and knew him to be an honest man, so asked him what happened, asked my side of the story, and asked what NK saw and heard too. The two other people sitting there didn't speak Dutch, so couldn't testify. EM screams about how everyone is against her and her angel, gets taken away with her son, and then I pick my phone up to see it has extra scratches now, making the top right corner unreadable so I can't see time anymore. I got asked if I wanted to press charges, but I didn't want to go through that. My phone is still usable, and I didn't get seriously injured. Turns out EM is known for such behavior, and it hasn't been the first time for her to be dragged off by police. NR even told me that half the time they come here, LS isn't even remotely sick. EM just likes to flirt with the doctor. Edit. People keep telling me I should have been pressing charges, Right now, all I want is to have a peaceful sleep. As it turns out, I'm suffering from a nasty food poisoning, but I can still look into pressing charges later on, when I'm feeling better, and OG did give me his number in case I changed my mind so he can testify as witness if needed. At this moment, though, all I want is sleep. Second edit. It's the next day now, and I've gone to the police to see about pressing charges. Turns out, EM wanted to press charges against me for emotionally damaging her child and undermining her child's upbringing. This has clearly not been the first time for her. She even had her son already psychologically evaluated last night, and whatever psychiatrist it was gave her an attest that her son has gotten PTSD due to my and OG's actions. Now, in normal circumstances, she would fall flat. But she has a rich husband, though still flirting with doctors, I see, and would take this to court with fancy lawyers. I can't afford a lawyer. I can't even afford a new pair of pants at the moment. So this would bring issues. I could get a pro deal lawyer. Pro bono in English. But they're basically random lawyers that will take your case for free, and if you win, the opposition has to pay them. But if you lose, you'll have to pay them. And seeing as I won't know what kind of lawyer I'll get, and I'll probably not have enough time to prepare with this lawyer, etc., I've been advised to make a deal with her. Police there is middleman, because she refused to talk to me face to face, saying we would remind her of her poor angel's PTSD. We ended up with no one sues anyone, we all go home and live our lives. She won't send her lawyers after me, I won't demand her to buy me a new phone, in other words, I still have a broken phone and scratched cheek. She has a child with fake PTSD. Good thing I went, though. Otherwise, I'd have gotten a letter from one of her lawyers in the mail soon. Five. For context, I work at a cafe in the downtown core of the city I live in. Today, I was taking advantage of a lull between customers to talk to a friend about game design and more specifically, a game I'm dreaming of developing one day. Granted, that dream, though, is probably a pipe dream, in all honesty, given how time-consuming and expensive it is. We were talking about how the game's multiplayer would be structured when this story begins. As usual, EK is entitled Kid, EM entitled Mom, F Friend, and Me. EK has been hovering around, obviously with an eavesdropping distance for the last couple of minutes, when he moves in and inserts himself into the conversation. Wow, that game sounds cool! I'm both enthused at the interest and annoyed at the intrusion. Thanks, I guess? What's it called? Where can I get it? It's not even Bill's, it's just an idea. Yeah, but what's it called? Is it on Xbox? It's not an actual game, kid. It's just an idea in Sage of Profession's head. What? 
Why not? Because I have no time or money. What? Can't you make time? And you make money here. Spend it on making that game. It's going to cost a hell of a lot more than my wage here. Liar. Excuse me? If you're going to keep lying like that, I'm going to get my mom to pay you. Then you'll have no more excuses. Sure, go right ahead. E.K. runs off and we keep talking about making the game when E.M. butts into the conversation without warning, stopping us by basically shoving a hand in F's face to stop him. Hi there, I'm E.K.'s mother. He said you play a game that he wants to play and you aren't telling him the name. We're not telling you the name because it doesn't have one yet. <sighs> How can a game not even have a name yet? How do you expect someone to find it on Bing? Yes, she actually said Bing. We're still laughing about it now. I'm doing my best to keep a straight face. It's not even made yet. It's not even being made. What? You guys are talking about how to play it, though! Just because Sage of Profession knows how it'll play, doesn't mean it's actually made. Tch, and how does it work? How do you know all that if it's just in your head? You've never imagined how something works before? She pauses visibly before continuing. Alright, fine. How long will it take you to make this? Probably... Have you even started? No, I don't even have the money. What? You have a job, you know. You earn money working here, right? <sighs> Whatever. My son's going to keep hounding me about this, so how much will I have to pay you? I pause for a few moments to think of an answer. <sighs> Half a million? Half a million? To pay for staff, development PCs, software licenses, data centers, cloud storage, and servers. I'll need more to buy or rent an office. Bullshit, here's what's going to happen. You're going to make this game for me and you're not going to lie about the price. I'm paying you like $80 like any other game out there and nothing more. I want to play the beta! And you're going to have a beta for my son next week. I won't. Excuse me? I'm paying you, so I expect you to do your job. And I expect you to have it ready by this time next week. I'm not working this day next week. Well, then you'd better come back here to meet me, otherwise I'm not paying you. Okay. I'm not working, so I'm not coming in. Enough. Beta, here, this time next week, or I'm not paying you. EM and EK leave at this point. Honestly, I hope they do come back. My manager was watching in the background, and she got a good laugh out of it all. Both her and I are actually kind of hoping EM and EK come back next week. If they do, we'll update you all. Hey everybody, Hal Freezer here, and thank you very much for listening to The Impractical Proudness of Parents. I pop. Number 23. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. <sighs> well, that's recording over for me. Currently 4.26 on a Saturday morning, November 2nd. The world will be starting just as I'm winding down. Well, say winding down, I'll be up for a few hours yet. I still have to make the videos. But when I'm done, I will begin on a relaxy weekend. As has as often happens with me, the old sleep schedule's a bit out of whack. Uh, so I'll have to try and get that sorted. Very important to make sure you're getting enough sleep. Day or two, I'm sure I'll get it sorted. Anyway, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening. And take very good care of yourselves.